Well, hello once again. Hopefully you've had a good week and uh, getting ready to celebrate our Independence Day on Saturday, uh, July 4th, and hopefully everybody will have a uh, good uh, holiday uh, time and uh, a safe one. Hopefully everybody is uh, practicing good uh, safety precautions during this uh, pandemic and uh, crisis that we're in. It seems like a lot of people are now uh, not adhering to the things that need to be done uh, to make sure that we're safe and uh, we're going backwards seems to be so hopefully everybody will start to pay attention and do the necessary things in order to uh, for us to be able to get this uh, virus under control. Uh, today we want to talk to you a little bit about uh, a passage that's found in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 6 uh, dealing with uh, unity in the body of Christ. Uh, something that we, we definitely need uh, to adhere to today. And uh, so we just want to consider that uh, for today. Uh, Paul was writing to the Ephesians and he writes there in verse 1, he says, I therefore the prisoner in the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the calling which you were called with all lowliness and meekness with long suffering for bearing one another in love and endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace so Paul here is encouraging and beseeching uh, Christians to uh, to walk in meekness to be long suffering uh, for bearing one another in love uh, as we should as Christians. So uh, he proceeds on then in, in verse uh, verse 4, and he talks about the seven ones of the body, or, and he talks about there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. We are desperately in need of unity in the faith today and in the church. Uh, if you look out throughout the world, there's, there's not any unity in, in the world today. Everybody's going about doing whatever they want to do, when they want to do it, and how they want to do it. And uh, we've lost a lot of respect uh, for our government, we've lost a lot of respect for one another, our uh, beliefs and uh, our lives and the way we live. And uh, we need to, uh, to concentrate on being unified once again. And he's talking about here, we as Christians need uh, to walk in this, uh, in this way. He talks about there, beginning in verse four, says, there is one body. There's only one body, and that is the body of Christ. And uh, so you talk about, you can talk to, listen to people out today. Uh, they talk about, well, there's, there's many bodies. Uh, there's many churches or, and uh, ways to get to heaven. But yet, here he says there's only one body, and that is the body of Christ uh, that was given for us uh, that we might have redemption uh, through Christ. One spirit, we only have one Holy Spirit that is given, and that is given to those who are uh, members of the church that have surrendered their lives to God in the gospel obedience, and uh, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit at that time. So we need to remember that as we uh, go about our lives. He says, we're called in one hope of your calling. What he means here is, is that we have one hope. Uh, we have hope in Christ. We have hope in, in God, the Holy Spirit, and we have hope that we can live a life here on earth in such a way that when our time here on earth is gone, that we can go to be home with God in heaven. So we have that hope. Verse five, he says, we have one Lord. There is only one Lord, and that is Jesus Christ. 
It's not Muhammad. It's not uh, uh, Buddha. Uh, it's not uh, Confucius or any of those others. Uh, but there is only one Lord that we have. He is the only living Lord uh, that is living. All these other religious uh, so-called gods uh, are dead and gone. Uh, they, they no longer exist, but God is living and ruling in the, in the world today. We have one faith. Our faith is, uh, is there uh, in Christ Jesus, and it's based on the teachings of Jesus, and that is uh, what we need to, to concentrate on. One baptism. Here he's talking about that there's only one baptism uh, for the remission of sins, and that is the one that Jesus instituted uh, when he set up the church, and it shows a requirement for you to be able to enter into the church. So why are all these important to us? Well, it's nice to know that when we go about and meet other Christians, that we can realize that we do have uh, these seven ones in common. And we have one Lord, we have one spirit, and we have uh, one body. We're all the body of Christ, and we've been added to that body. And it uh, doesn't matter whether you are in Tennessee or uh, overseas in, in, uh, in England or, or anywhere in the United States. Uh, when you go to a Church of Christ, you know that you can be there, you can worship with people of uh, like faith and uh, know that uh, you're faith faithfully uh, worshiping together uh, in the same way and believe in the same uh, faith. He says, one God and one Father of all. We only have one God the Father, and uh, that is the supreme God. And uh, he's the one that has control over the world and knows what's going on. And, uh, has, uh, and he's the Father of us all. Uh, he created us all. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And uh, so we know that... Uh, that there is only one God. He's above us all, and he's in, in us all. Uh, if we truly follow after Christ, then uh, we have God dwelling in us through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. So uh, in this time of turmoil in our lives, we need to, to think on these verses. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. And dealing with uh, unity in Christ, walking in, in uh, and we have uh, unity in the body. And uh, we need to strive to continue to do that as we go through our lives. So uh, hopefully this uh, will have you some things you can think about this week as, uh, as we go about uh, our daily uh, walks of life. And uh, when you see all the strife and turmoil going on, we can rest assured that in the body of Christ we can have unity uh, through these seven ones that are listed here that Paul listed in uh, Ephesians. So hopefully that uh, will help you through this week, uh, coming week, and uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for, for your Son and for the sacrifice that he made upon the cross. We're thankful, Father, for the church that it was established. We thank the Father for our Christian brothers and sisters that we can all walk together in unity and realize, Father, that, uh, that we have so much in common with one another. And we know that we have the one Father, one God, one Holy Spirit, and one body. And Father, help us uh, always live in such a manner that we can live peaceably with one another, especially those of the household of faith. And help us also, Father, to be able to live peaceably with our neighbors and those that we come in contact with. And Father, we ask that you would bless this country, that we could put to rest all the turmoil and tribulations that are going on, that people could uh, calm down and could uh, rationally uh, consider the changes that need to be made in our governments, in our society, and that we can uh, do it peaceably and without all the uh, looting and violence and destruction of property, Father, 
Uh, it's such a sad thing to see all of that going on at this time. Just continue to bless us, Father, and keep us safe. Forgive us of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, you have a good week, and we will look forward to talking to you again.